Hi, I'm Dr. Udramon and through the Oral Health Channel today we're going to be talking about radiation induced oral mucositis. Let's start. So recently I had an encounter with a patient who was unfortunately suffering from radiation induced oral mucositis and the therapy had radiation therapy had taken long back before he came to me and now he cannot eat food and he is under a lot of trouble so i hope he gets better because we started the treatment with this obviously all of my patients do inspire me to make content and that's why i think it's my social responsibility to talk about radiation mucositis so unfortunately whosoever is undergoing some sort of cancer therapy there are three ways uh, which can be a combination of other things as well uh, where cancer is treated either it is surgical therapy or it's chemotherapeutic therapy or radiation therapy if anyone is going uh, under radiation therapy they would understand what oral mucositis means or radiation mucositis means mucositis if you break it down it actually means the inflammation of the mucosa be it your oral mucosa or your gastrointestinal mucosa so this is a side effect that people come across when they are going uh, undergoing radiation therapy which usually starts off at the second week and it usually starts off as uh, you know uh, erythema then it turns into edema and then it turns into tenderness then into pain then it becomes you know difficult swallowing and burning sensation and may it may lead to ulcers in the mouth or maybe in the stomach as well so what i would like you to be apprised about is that this is a part of the process and i know that it is very difficult and i empathize with your discomfort but i think it is very important to talk about radiation mucositis the simple pathophysiology the mechanism of action is very simple we are using radiation therapy because of the aggressive cells that are rapidly dividing we want to stop them in their tracks and make sure that their cell cycle is interrupted what happens because of ionizing radiation it's as simple as that you must have heard about the atomic bomb it nukes everything in fact it even affects the normal tissues that are there in your mucosal tissues now what happens with this is that there is some definite dna damage that happens and there is some initiation of upregulation mechanisms that kind of increase the level of inflammation that is present in your skin and oral mucosa and the uh, gastrointestinal mucosa and that leads to release of chemical mediators of inflammation and then that causes other problems such as pain edema and all those things so usually when the radiation therapy is happening it happens and starts around the second week of radiation therapy which starts off as uh, you know edema and erythema which can further progress into the fourth and fifth week where we might have to stop the radiation therapy because of the you know the ulcerative uh causing uh, nature of the ionizing radiation because if it reaches to form ulcers it can cause permanent scarring or injury to the tissues now coming to uh, the uh, treatment aspect about it you have to first of all prevention is the best thing if you are having any sort of oral abuse of habit please stop it as much as you can and also try to go for a healthier lifestyle that's very important you need to stop you know doing uh, tobacco uh, you know uh, cigarettes smoking you know alcohol and all those things because these are things that cause changes to your oral mucosa secondly what do i would i would like to uh, apprise you about is that maintenance of good oral hygiene is very paramount because of the fact that any sort of bacterial or microbial colonization can lead to produ- production of inflammatory mediators and cytokines and that's what causes the further complications while you are recovering from radiation mucositis when it comes to the management prevention obviously is very important and you need to make sure that you're maintaining adequate oral hygiene getting all the teeth that are kind of compromised removed in the first place because you might get osteoradio necrosis also that happens a lot of times with radiation patient so use of uh, you know anesthetic mouthwash is very important right before you eat because that will help you to get all the nutrients because you'll be able to eat the right quantity and the right quality of food the other drugs that can be used are glutamine palmiferin then you have beta carotene and you have other sucrafilt uh, is also one of the drugs sucrafilt is also used in peptic disease and it has been found that it can reduce your symptoms but the uh, evidence is very anecdotal it's not too much seen and it's not been studied too much low level laser therapy has also been used in the treatment of you know the, these symptoms and usually the vas scores that is the visual analog scores of the patients generally tend to go down 
Now, this one thing very, very important that I would like to talk about is that mucositis can happen in an acute form, it can happen in a subacute form, and it can happen in a chronic form. Then the chronic form is actually very, uh, you know, uh, cumbersome for the patients because it can happen three years after the radiotherapy as well. In one of my patients, it's actually still happening after 10 years of the radiotherapy and still the patient is under discomfort. So what I would like to strongly recommend to everyone is that you get a good you know, healthcare provider who is working with you in tandem with other healthcare providers about your palliative care, about your you know, uh, symptomology and all those things. And you need to be on a regular recall and you need to make sure that all your tests are being done and everything else that is medically you know, uh, of very paramount importance needs to be taken care of. So this was today's episode. Please like, share and subscribe and please do press the bell icon for important updates. If you need to contact me, kindly refrain from calling me directly. Here are my social media handles and my WhatsApp number. And if you feel like that you can drop a feedback, constructive criticism or any sort of doubts or queries or apprehensions, please feel free to do so in the YouTube comment section. So that's it for today. Thank you.